Relegation can be the breaking point for a lot of Premier League teams. Often sides who finish in the bottom three and are thrown down to the championship like a drunk being thrown to the floor by his own lack of balance find it difficult to maintain stability in the division with the aim of promotion seeming like an almost Herculean task, be it your Stoke Cities, your Blackpools or your Oldham Athletics, my god especially Oldham Athletic. However, unlike your mum, not everything that goes down stays down and sometimes teams are able to immediately gain their top flight status back, be it due to their top quality manager, players who are too good to be in the lower division like if Jamie Oliver started working in a kitchen canteen, the turkey twister stealing mother or they have the financial fortitude to assert themselves to the top of the table. With that being said, welcome to Good Sport Reviews and this is 10 teams who are promoted immediately after being relegated. And if you wouldn't mind taking two seconds out of your busy video watching time to click the subscribe button, that would be incredible and you won't need to be relegated by me. Yeah. Number 10, Crystal Palace. At the end of the first ever Premier League season, Crystal Palace narrowly missed out on survival after they lost to Arsenal 3-0 on the final day of the season and Oldham Athletic defeated Southampton 4-3 in dramatic fashion. This resulted in the side managed by Steve Koppel being relegated down to what was then known as the Football League Division 1 on 49 points, which certainly isn't the worst place to be when you consider some points totals today, looking at you, Derby County. And they set about immediately being promoted with the Eagles winning seven of their first 10 games thanks to goals from the likes of Christopher Armstrong, Dean Gordon and Gareth Southgate who has more waistcoats than he does attacking tactics and the man only owns one waistcoat. Following this they dominated the first division winning 27 of their 46 games and only losing three in their final 21 matches which included a 4-1 win over Bristol City and a 2-1 win over Leicester City. They ended this campaign on an impressive 90 points and were sent straight back up to the Premier League becoming the first team to be relegated from it and promoted back the very next season alongside Nottingham Forest. And speaking of... Number 9, Nottingham Forest. Forest were in a scary situation at the end of the 92-93 season with the Reds finishing bottom of the inaugural Premier League table on 40 points, losing rising prospect in midfield of Roy Keane and parting ways with legendary manager Brian Clough who announced his retirement in March after 18 years at the helm which included winning a first division title and two European Cups. Two more than Arsenal have by the way, just thought I'd get that out there. Know your place, Gunners. So when they found themselves in the first division, many expected them to struggle and dip even lower, but this simply wasn't the case with the side led by Frank Clark ending the season in second place thanks to an incredible campaign from Stan Collymore who scored 19 league goals and single-handedly won games against the likes of Notts County, West Brom and Sunderland. During this season they went on a 13 game unbeaten run between the 6th of November and the 6th of February and a 10 game run at the end of the final stretch of the season with them winning matches against the likes of Watford and Charlton Athletic. They won 50% of their matches that season and ended the campaign on 83 points, which was enough for them to finish in second place, nine points above third place. Millwall. Number 8, QPR. In the early 2010s, QPR were going through a major transition within their squad with the 2011-12 season ending in a 17th place Premier League finish and the club signing the likes of Sean Wright Phillips, Joey Barton, Jabril Cissé and plenty of other well-known players before they went into the 2012-13 season and got royally thrown around like two teenagers fighting Eddie Hall. Despite bringing in former Champions League winners like Park Ji Sung, Jose Basingwe, and goddamn Julio Cesar, as well as signing top prospects like Remy, the Hoops ended the season in 20th place on a measly 25 points and ending up with Harry Redknapp by the end of the campaign. This meant that they had the championship to look forward to, and quite honestly, they had every right to, with yet another special transfer window, resulting in them finishing fourth place after winning 23 games and amassing 80 points. The side won matches in convincing fashion and started the championship campaign by going on an 11 game unbeaten run during which they went on an 8 game run without conceding a goal and thanks to terrific goal scoring campaigns from the likes of Charlie Austin and Bobby Zamora who replaced Loic Remy who was on loan at Newcastle the side made the playoff spots and going on to beat Wigan Athletic 2-1 on aggregate and finally Derby County 1-0 in the final. QPR are considered the prime example of money going wrong in the English game but the 2013-14 season seems to be an exception. 
Number seven, Manchester City. Yes, believe it or not, kids, there was a time when Manchester City weren't winning Premier League titles and destroying all footballing happiness in the modern world with the best players, endless amounts of cash, and a manager who was the living embodiment of fun butchering misery with his tactics that prevent even the smallest bit of individual creativity, allowing him to thrash every single team in England to within an inch of its life. Man City were relegated in the 2000 2001 season with 34 points after they lost 20 matches, six of which came in a row between the 28th of October with a 5-0 thrashing at the hands of Arsenal and the 3rd of December with a 2-1 defeat to Chelsea. Fun fact, this was the season that the club saw them sign Ballon d'Or winner George Weah and Alfie Haaland, the father of the T1000. Fast forward one year and a Kevin Keegan led Man City were absolutely destroying the championship thanks to phenomenal goal scoring campaigns from Sean Gota who scored 28 goals, Darren Huckabee who scored 20 goals and Paolo Wanchor who scored 12 goals propelling City to the top of the division on a sensational 99 points 10 above second place West Brom. Along with this they scored 100 goals which is 32 more than the second highest scoring team Wolverhampton Wanderers and they did this by scoring 3 or more goals in 20 three separate matches and four of them involved them scoring at least five. This was a terrific season and while I might be showing off my bitter side whenever I mention City, I can't deny just how incredible this campaign was for the Sky Blues. Number six, West Brom. West Bromwich Albion have been treated to five relegations during the lifespan of their Premier League career. Aren't they lucky? But the first of these came in 2002 free season when the side managed by Gary Megson were in the politest way up like Homer Simpson fighting Dredrick Tatum. The Baggies lost 24 games that season, including a 5-2 against Arsenal in the third match of the season, a 3-0 to Fulham on February the 19th, and an embarrassing 6-0 thumping at the hands of Liverpool towards the end of this miserable campaign. Despite this, the club kept Megson at the helm and actually paid off really well, with the former Leicester and Bolton Wanderers manager leading the future Allison Conceders to a second place finish after winning 25 of the 46 games available. This was helped by the fact that they went out of the FA Cup in the third round and the League Cup in the fifth, and by the fact that players like Lee Hughes and Jason Kumas were scoring goals on a regular basis, with Hughes scoring four goals in as many games as an example. Despite losing the last three games of the season, the side only lost six throughout the rest of the campaign and were comfortably in the automatic promotion spots, finishing seven points ahead of Sunderland and 12 ahead of fourth-placed West Ham United. Number five, Watford. When you change managers more than a parent changing a baby's nappy or Netflix changing the subscription rate, increase it again, you bastard, let's see where it gets you, then your club will be subjected to a few relegations. And that goes double for Watford, who have been relegated not once, not twice, but four times since the Premier League was founded in 1992, with the 2019-20 being the second to most recent. And oh boy, it sure wasn't pretty. For starters, the side went through four managers during this COVID-riddled mess of a season with Xavi Garcia, only lasting until the 7th of September, Kike Sanchez Flores lasting two months, I've had Weetabix that last longer, Nigel Pearson, the man who is what happens if a pile of paving slabs gained sentience and starts managing, almost saying the club, but being sacked despite picking up wins against the likes of Manchester United and Liverpool, and Hayden Mullins, who... Yeah, they went down in 19th place but went into the championship with a team more than capable of coming straight back up with players like Jao Pedro, Ismail Assar and Andre Gray leading the line of attack ahead of an experienced midfield and back line who led the side to 91 points with them winning 27 games and going on an 8 game unbeaten run between the beginning of March and the end of April and second manager of that season Zisco propelling them into the Premier League with an exciting attack minded style of football which saw them pick up high scoring wins like the 6-0 over Bristol City and a 4-1 over Rotherham United. Number four, Charlton Athletic. The 1998-99 season couldn't have started off much better for Charlton Athletic, who'd just been promoted from Division 1 into the Premier League, with the side managed by Alan Kerbishley only losing two of their first eight matches and finding themselves in a consistent mid-table position from week to week. That was until the 21st of November, when a 4-1 loss to Leeds United began an eight-game losing streak, seeing the 1947 FA Cup winners plummet into the relegation zone. 
ending the season in 18th place, despite having players like Clive Mendonca and Keith Jones. This meant the 1999-2000 season was spent in Division 1, with the hierarchy deciding that Alan Kerbishley was still the man to lead them to success, and that's exactly what he did, with them winning 27 games of the season, ending on 91 points, and picking up massive wins against the likes of Warsaw, QPR and Crystal Palace to propel them into first place, which is a position they remained in from game week 26 until the end of the season. Charlton had the likes of Scott Parker and Paul Koncheski on their side, and while the latter of those names may fill my very soul with enough dread to fill an Olympic-sized swimming pool, they made sure there was enough stability in the back line and midfield to ensure the club's promotions prospects were never in danger. Number three, Burnley. During the 2010s, Burnley established the name for themselves under Sean Dyche as a side that were constantly tipped for relegation, but were actually a lot more stable than people thought with them finishing 16th, 7th, 15th, 10th and 17th before ending the 21-22 season in 18th place and being relegated down to the Championship. The season began with the Clarets losing four of their first five games and spending 15 of the 38 game weeks in the relegation spots. They did manage to put up a fight for survival towards the end, but they were relegated on the final day of the season following a 2-1 loss to Newcastle United while Leeds United managed to remain in the league. This meant that the club were needing to sign a new manager after the departure of Sean Dyche and their attentions turned to Belgium with the club bringing in Vinnie Comp with the head like a thwomp to become their new manager which yielded one of the greatest championship campaigns in history as Burnley reached a remarkable 101 points scoring 87 goals along the way and the side staying in first division from game week 12 up until they won the championship title. Not to mention they only lost three games all season which in the championship is ludicrous by the way and they even went on a 22 game unbeaten run meaning they were primed to go back into the Premier League with their position based attack minded style of play looking likely to ensure survival and well the less said the better but it's still a perfect response to being relegated and it's a credit to the now Bayern Munich manager. Number two Newcastle United. This was the season Newcastle were managed by Steve McLaren. No wonder they drink so much. The 2015-16 campaign was an awful mess for the Toon Army with the side boasting the likes of Chancel Mbemba, Gini Wijnaldum, Musa Sissoko, Alexander Mitrovic, Pafi Sisse being ran by an owner whose priorities were pies and Newcastle in that order, and a manager who had as much tactical nuance as a slice of ham. They went down to the championship in 18th place, losing 19 matches, including a 5-1 defeat to Crystal Palace, of the 38 game weeks, they spent 28 of them in the relegation zone, and this condemned them to a season in the second division. The team may have lost the likes of Sissoko, Townsend, and Wijnaldum in the summer, but they managed to keep hold of their main asset, Rafa Benitez, who showed the championship the difference between a manager and a manager capable of winning a Champions League with Jimmy Traore in the back line. Newcastle amassed 94 points and spent 25 weeks at the top of the league, smashing teams on a regular basis, including a 6 0 against QPR, a 4 0 against Birmingham City and all this was enough for them to finish one point above second place Brighton who had a season which doesn't get enough credit FYI. They won the championship on the final day after a 3-0 win against Barnsley and it was a terrific response from a side in the midst of the Mike Ashley nightmare to immediately go back up to the Premier League in the way they did. And number one Norwich City. If you look up the phrase yo-yo club in the dictionary you will see three things. Pop World, Rosies and Norwich City, the living embodiment of a side which can't seem to make up its mind about what division it identifies with. The Canaries were being relegated and promoted immediately on three separate occasions. The first came in 2014 when they finished in 18th place on 33 points before being immediately promoted under Alex Neal the following season thanks to a third place finish and a playoff final victory against Middlesbrough. The second came in 2020 when they were relegated in that Covid riddled excuse of a Premier League season as I've already mentioned with them finishing in 20th place on a measly 21 points before going on to win the championship title for a second time in three seasons thanks to 26 goals from Timu Puki, which gained them promotion straight back in the Premier League on 97 points. Now you might think after being relegated and promoted again the club would learn their lesson and find a way to ensure survival but Canary say no. Instead they spent 37 of the 38 game weeks in the relegation zone only improving their total from the 1920 season by a whopping one point and only winning five games all season which came against Brentford, Southampton, Everton, Watford and Burnley. Four of those sides either faced or were relegated and Brentford were newly promoted so way to go Norwich. This club was always going to be top of the list as going up, down, up, down for four seasons in a row like John Terry and Wayne Bridges Kitchen is just a prime example of a yo-yo club 
in action and that's our list if you are new around here please make sure to click like and subscribe it really does help out massively and let me know in the comments down below what you thought of a the teams mentioned and b any teams that i've missed thank you very much for watching and i'll see you all in the next one